I've done it too. I've run my line converting our character dates into an as date format. And you can see this in my data frame with this new column called as date uh, that is all now in the ISO being displayed in the ISO format. So now to do a time series decomposition, many time series functions in R require the data to be imported in a very specific format, often called a time series object. Time series objects are just a packaging of time series data with particular information about the, the frequency of data collection and the time span over which the data is being collected that allows these packages to do very efficient time series analysis. Different packages are, will have different formats of this time series object, um, but we're going to be using the functions that are embedded in the base R installation. And so we're going to use the standard R time series object uh, for most of our analyses today. The reason that I had you format your dates, aside from the fact that it was a good exercise to help you remember what we did last week, but it was also because in order to import our data into a time series object, it has to be in chronological order. Before you import your data into a time series object, it is always a good habit to make sure your data is sorted before you import it. Why is this important? Because when we import the data into a time series object, the dates don't go with our data. And I know that seems really weird right now because it's like, well, it's a time series. Why wouldn't it take the dates? When we import the data, we will give the time series object basically three pieces of information. What was the start date? What was the end date? And how frequent was that data collection? Was it monthly? Was it every two months? Was it every four months? Was it annual? And that is it. It will construct the dates that go with each one of your data points. But if your data is not already in chronological order from it is going to just assign everything in whatever order you imported it. Your entire analysis can get really wrong really quickly if you import data that has not been sorted. And because of the dates format that I gave you in this file, we had to convert those to an ISO format um, in order to get those, uh, get those sorted correctly. So before we get started, let's sort that data file. Data equal data, the name of our data file. We're going to order it. We're going to order it based on that as, oops, as date column. And then comma at the end of that, otherwise it will break. Run. Excellent. Everything should be sorted. Take a quick peek just to confirm because terrible things happen if it's not sorted and we're good to go. So now let's extract the three pieces of information that we need to be able to give the function that will convert our data into a time series object. And the first is that minimum date. Store that information in a variable called min date. And I'm going to use the function min, which will find the minimum value in a series of values. And this is the other reason that converting to an as date format for our dates is really important because now things like this min function understands that it's looking at dates and it knows how to find the earliest date from our list. And that, and if we look over in our environment window, what we can see is we now have a value for min date, which is uh, March 15th, 1992. Next, we will calculate the maximum date or the newest date by doing something similar using the mac fun max function. Date, run that, perfect. And again, in, over in the environment window, we can see that it has indeed given us the newest date in that list, which is uh, November 15th, 2014. And then I've already told you that I have forced this data to be monthly. So we already have that piece of information in our head. Now what we're going to do is import the NDVI data, which is that greenness index that's going to tell us about uh, the greening and browning of our site over time. And I'm going to store this information in something I'm, I'll call NDVI.TS, which is the label I'm going to give the time series object that we're going to import that NDVI data into. Equal 
And now the function for turning our data into a time series is called TS for time series. And we will give it specifically that column, the data and DBI column. We will give it our start, which we have to give it in this particular format. So C parenthesis 1992, which is the year of the minimum date and then three, which is the month of the minimum date. It doesn't care about the day because all it cares about is that this is the data for the month of March. I simply put a date on it when I was constructing it because you have to have a day as part of a date. We're gonna do the same thing with the end. Give it the year 2014, oops, 2014 comma and 11. And then we are going to tell it that the frequency at which the data was collected is monthly. So 12 units within an annual cycle. And now we're going to run this. And now let's also look at what it's giving us. So I'm gonna give this, look at the first few rows of our new time series object. And what it gives us back is just this string of numbers, and these are the NDVI numbers in the order in which they were in the data file. While it looks like, how do you use that? It's just a string of numbers. It knows under the hood that this is a time series and it knows what dates are associated with each one of those values. And we can see this by doing something really simple where we just say, I want you to plot this time series object NDVI.TS. And all I'm gonna tell it is that I want an X label called year, Y label, which I'm gonna call greenness. And that's it, I'm not giving it dates, I'm not telling it where to find a date, I'm just saying here's an object filled with data and I want you to let, plot it and I just want these things on the X and Y axis. Let's run it. I am going to shift my screen over so that you can now see the plot a little better. Get it up. All right, and so there's our plot. So what has happened? We have converted our information on NDVI into an object that now we can now plug this data into a variety of different time series analyses and start to play with it.